Hey, Justin Lobato here inside of the beautiful Auto Geek Show Car Garage. And we're here today because we get a lot of questions from our customers about how to use a foam gun. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and show you the difference between a foam gun and a foam cannon. Just in case there's any kind of confusion, we could clarify what we're talking about and what the difference is. Obviously going into a foam cannon, this is something that you're gonna to wanna to use on a pressure washer. This is gonna give you a much more significant amount of foam and this is for a much different type of machine, obviously being a pressure washer. So with that, we're gonna get that out of the way and go right into what the main question is, how to use a foam gun. So with the foam guns that we offer here at AutoGeek, there's some really neat features that this foam gun has. First and foremost, it has uh, a gun with it, that a garden hose gun, that allows you to have a quick disconnect. Now, one of the biggest tips I would say as a professional and as a consumer for your first time using this, when you go to connect this connection here with this quick disconnect, you're gonna wanna make sure it's secure. And by doing so, point away from the vehicle before use, so that way if it pops off, it doesn't pop off onto your beautiful paint and damage. And it also allows you to understand if the actual foam gun is working properly once you pull the trigger. So from there, you also have a couple other features. You have this rod that has a couple different holes in it. And basically what that contributes to is different dilution ratios. So they're different orifice holes to say. And on the front of the bottle, which is super helpful, you have those different dilution ratios. There's five settings. And with that, you have one to 28, which is one ounce to a gallon, one to 64, which is two ounces to a gallon, one to 32, which is four ounces to a gallon, one to 20, six ounces to a gallon, and one to 10, which is 12 ounces to a gallon. So all those different adjustments will allow you to understand the type of soap that you're putting in for the purpose that you're using it for. I always recommend just going to the largest hole to start with. That's obviously gonna give you the most foam right out the gate. And then if you need to adjust from there, play with it. That's gonna be personal preference, of course. And that's just as easy as turning it and sliding it over and you'll feel the little ball valve in there jump right into the hole and lock it in place. Now, on top of this, you'll notice there's like this screw-like piece that allows air in. That's something that you're gonna really wanna ratchet down and make sure that that's nice and tight. Don't, make, don't let that get loose and make sure that that's always tight during the use of the actual foam gun. And there's also one here on the side that tends to get loose and that stops this actual rod from sliding all the way out. So of course, make sure that's on and secure before every use. I would say both of these top side and side screw pieces, make sure that they're on 100%. And then you have the actual head of the gun where you could pop this off with a C-clamp and or you could hear it pop back on. And that's something that you could have this fan tip where you could have it go this direction, that direction, it doesn't matter. Whatever your personal preference is, you have 360 use of that fan direction of your preference. Then as you open it up, is where you add your solution. Of course, you're gonna first add water and then add your soap, but make sure that this stem is securely on. And sometimes, whatever the reason may be, if it's not on from getting it brand new out the box, make sure you tightly push it into the valve so it's securely on there so you get full potential of it not acting up or doing anything funky that you wouldn't like, of course. But once you have everything secure and the ins and outs of this foam gun, that's where we could go into adding our soap. Now, we've already done some demo videos with our DP wash and wax, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and add about two ounces of soap to this that's already filled, this container that's already filled with the water. I'm gonna do that by eyeball. So one, two, close that off. Make sure I put this on, tighten it up. Mix it back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my gun. Attach it to my quick connect on the end of my garden hose. Turn that on, make sure it's good so I don't have that pop off on me. Practice what I preach to the side, just to double check everything. I'm gonna angle this. I like the up and down fan, especially for the front of the vehicle.
Now, that's not too bad when it comes to foam. I do like a little bit more foam myself. So for that reason, even though I already have it on the largest hole, I'm gonna open this back up. Then I'm gonna add a couple more ounces of soap to this. Now it's not gonna hurt anything to add more. You may need to rinse a little bit more depending upon the concentration of your soap, but I'm looking at about from the two ounces I started with to now going into four ounces. And that's about the most I would wanna add to say. Again, mix it up. Reattach, test. I could already see there's a difference. Now going back into this, oh yeah. Now we have some respectable foam suds coming out of this foam gun. And again, if you wanna get more foam, more of a shaving cream consistency, that's where you're gonna to wanna to go and invest into a foam cannon. But there you have it. This is the Auto Geek foam gun, the ins and outs of how to use it and where it's best to use that. And of course, using it with different soaps is gonna be your preference. I do personally like the DP wash and wax with it, but there are a lot of variables and soaps that you can use. So if you need more information about the foam gun and or foam cannon, visit us at autogeek.com.